Good morning. Welcome to a marvelous Monday. It is a marvelous Monday because my guest, Miss Vicki Lawson, is going to be with me shortly, and we're going to talk music, 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 and lots of good gospel music that has been happening for many, many years. She is the host of a program on WATC TV. She is the co-host and um, absolutely loves what she does, and we're going to get to hear from her in just a minute. But I have a public service announcement right now, and we need to handle this, and I, I want you all to pay attention and listen and think about if this were your 16-year-old. Please be on the lookout for Cade Miller. He is age 16. He left his home in the Clear Creek area last night around 8.30. He left behind his car, his wallet, and his phone along with a runaway note. He has not been seen since. Please, if you have any information, call 911 and share if you have seen him, if you think you have possibly seen him. This is somebody's son, somebody's grandson, somebody's loved one, and we want to make sure that he is returned safe to his home. So please, again, don't forget, if you see this young man, if you're, if you're his friend and you know where he is, please help the family to return him safely home. Okay, we are going to uh, share uh, things that happened over the weekend because this weekend our precious evangelist, sweet Elizabeth, went back to Germany. We had a luncheon for her on Saturday and I happened to be in the mood to make an ice cream sandwich heaven. And I'll tell you how it got that name. I did it for an Inspirations concert many, many years ago. My dear friend Paulette Massey gave me a recipe Everybody knows I change recipes. I don't go by the recipe. I start with what looks good, and then I change it to suit myself. Well, at this luncheon, we wanted to eat healthy, so we had some apples and caramel dip, and I might say I dipped a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> and we had some fruit, and we had a healthy, healthy salad. We had lots of good food. And, and this is the saying of the day, you'll be amazed at what you attract into your life when you start believing in what you deserve. Oh my gosh, could not be more appropriate. I've talked to so many people who are struggling, 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 and until you believe in yourself and you believe that you deserve better, things just don't line up. But that's, that's a great saying for today. But let's... Now this, this is something, everybody think about this. If you're looking to move your dental office, if you're looking to move your business, we have a location just near Kroger in the Macedonia community for sale. We have one acre and adjoining it is one acre. That's two acres right behind the racetrack gas station. It is available. If you are looking to build, if you are looking to open a business, if you have a very successful business and you need a great location for it, this is the location. So pick up the phone and call me or Evelyn and we would be happy to help you. You see that Kroger sign, you see that Ace Hardware sign, you see that racetrack, it's right there. And that is my goodie from Andy Hartman's crew. They are so precious. I love to use them for closings. They're amazing, they're so good. And I said, they're as good as a glass of sweet tea on a southern veranda on an afternoon. So. They're just precious, so thank you to come into our office and bring this. Now that is ice cream sandwich heaven. And my little kick to it is I buy the best ice cream in the world. It is drumstick ice cream by Edie's Ice Cream, and I put it in the middle of the ice cream sandwiches along with Cool Whip and all these other great things. It is to die for. And if you eat a whole lot of it, you probably will die <laughs> because <laughs> the, sugar, the sugar rush is unreal. But I couldn't find wet nuts, and y'all, I had to make my own wet nuts. That ought to be a crime in 10 counties. I had to buy nuts and then put them in syrup and let them sit and make my own wet nuts because went to three stores and nobody had wet nuts. That's just crazy. Now, this is our healthy lunch. Our healthy lunch was fruit and salad, and then I made loaded tater tots. That's not real healthy, but it was really, really good. And I did one with just an all veggie mix, and then I did one with chili and cheese and peppers and black mm -hmm. olives, lots of things that are good for you because after all, they told me that I will heal if I eat a lot of protein and I, I eat, eat a lot of protein and drink a lot of water. What protein did y'all see in that meal? Nothing, not any, <laughs> because the chicken was hidden in a broccoli chicken casserole I made. There was a broccoli chicken casserole on that table, and it was so simple, so easy, 
and it was the hit of the day. That's the broccoli chicken casserole, and it was so crazy. It was something I dreamed up at the last minute because I thought we have to make something healthy for Miss Paula. Don't forget that my recipes are shared in the Pickens County Progress Weekly. I choose a recipe of the week and I write a little story about it. So pick up a copy of the Progress and you will get to see. I'll take your recipe and I'll destroy it. I'll just change it to make it my own because that's what I do. You know, if you like lemon extract, I probably like almond extract and I change things. But that's what cooking's about. It's about being creative. It's about mm -hmm. being creative. Now, do you like to cook? Not really. No, no. See, people who don't like to cook like to run around with people who cook. That's exactly right. Then we get lots to eat. That's right. That's right. Well, Vicki, you have been a part of something that just won my heart when, when Bob Reese, our dear friend and your cousin, started the Widow and Widower's Meal. Yes. Down in Hickory Flat. And um, every year, you and Lita were part of that and, and a group of women just, y'all get in that kitchen and you make it happen. We do, and we, you know, I'm thankful that I have a lot of people that have volunteered to help me, mm -hmm. and we are still going to continue to do that. We had a great turnout this year, and it was awesome. And I love that now it's in the spring, so it's not a conflict with all the holiday things going on, you know. And it's daylight to drive home. Yes, yes, we love that it's daylight to drive home. Yeah, we will learn. Mm -hmm. um, you're young enough that you haven't had that old cataract stuff. Well, I do have cataracts. Do you right really? Now. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that makes a difference when you're it driving does. at night. Yeah, it does. yeah, yeah. So, so um, now let's go back to singing. You are the co host of Just Keep Singing on yes. WATC TV in Atlanta. Can we share who your co host is? Sure. My co host is Chief Melvin Clout. He's from the Clout Indian family, mm -hmm. and um, they've been around for a very long time. Very yeah. long, longer than I've been around. That's a long time. <laughs> Way before my time also. <laughs> yes, yeah. But um, there's a lot of interesting things that we can talk about as we uh, talk about Melvin. But Melvin turned 90 years old a week mm -hmm. ago today mm -hmm. on June the 5th, and he is amazing. Yeah. He absolutely keeps going and going and going. He's like the ever ready bunny. He never stops, and he just drives everywhere and does what That's he wants crazy. to. He still serves God every day. And and that is that is the cool thing about it. He he lost his his first wife, right. and um, he didn't give up on life then. And he just you know it's amazing to me how people just keep on doing what they love. They do. And he was married to Marge for sixty six years when she 66 passed. Sixty six uh, years. So that's a long time. That's a long time. They married time. his sweetheart, sweethearts uh, their senior year of high school. Goodness. And they were together all those years and. If you knew Melvin and if you knew Marge, she was quite a character. Mm -hmm. She was a lot of fun to be around. And he was one of, is it 10 children? Yes. Yes. Okay, one of 10 children that was the mother the reason they started doing gospel music? Well, his father um, came here and he met his mother. They first started out by starting churches for uh, the Church of God. Mm -hmm. And they were out west. They're from uh, North Dakota out there. Mm -hmm. And they would go around to California and many, many states out there. And so the, the first part was evangelism. Mm -hmm. So they were evangelists for many years before they began to sing. Wow. Well, I know when I was watching 3 a.m. this morning, y'all, I have had, you can tell by looking at me today, I've had like an hour and a half sleep. The storms were crazy, they so were. I'm Googling and I'm, I'm listening to his family music yeah. and I'm, hey, this is good, this is cool, this is, I didn't even know they had video cameras way back then, you know, <laughs> and I'm watching this stuff. But it was really interesting to me because as much as I've been around them and I know the Bridgmans absolutely adore him. They and, do. And, and so he, it's such an honor to see him carry on this tradition. Now, is it he and one sister are the only two of the original uh, There's a brother living also. Okay. Um, and I'm apologize, I can't remember which name. Uh, it's too much to keep up with mm -hmm, for me, I think. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, Melvin and his sister are very, very close in um, age as well as just yeah. have always done a lot of things together. And they are just a wonderful pair and just a lot of fun. Well, when you started, y'all do a program that is music and ministry. Yes. Tell me a little bit about how this evolved. Well, Melvin started 14 years ago mm -hmm. um, and he did it by himself and he would do a devotion five minutes or so and then we play gospel music mm -hmm. about a year and a half ago he called and asked if I would be his co-host and mm -hmm. of course I was honored to do mm -hmm. that so now he picks the music and then I uh, usually center a devotion 
around one of the songs that we're going to be featuring. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll talk about the group. We're going to have one that comes up where I actually interview Melvin for a little bit about his family, and that's going to be very it. interesting. Yeah. So that's kind of how it works. And um, his show, if you look up in Wikipedia, and he's very proud of this, mm -hmm. is the longest-running gospel singing TV show ever. Wow. 14 consecutive years. and. He loves it because it's in Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. Well, when we look back on those years, um, did they do original music or did they do other people's music? Because what I was seeing, they were doing hymns, a lot of hymns. They do both. They mm -hmm. did both. Um, one of the interesting stories I'd like to tell is when they first came south, they were singing and they met Uva May Lefebvre. Oh, of course, the Uva best. May, if you know Southern <laughs> Gospel music. And they were having one of the singings in downtown Atlanta, mm -hmm. the municipal auditorium mm -hmm. that they used to have all night. All back. night singing, yeah. Yeah, they really had all night singings mm -hmm. back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, they went and they dressed in all black suits that matched. So Wally Fowler, he goes way back, but a lot of people know he, he was a great promoter of Southern Gospel music. He thought, wow, this is awesome. He said they got the dark eyes and everything. So he was calling pasta companies. He thought they were Italian. <laughs> So <laughs> we laugh about that. And then when he found out they were Indians, he said, what you need to do is go back to your reservation, have them make costumes for you. Oh and gosh. then, um, you know, be presented as the Clout Indian family. They were right. known just as the Clout family up uh -huh. until then, which uh -huh. I thought was kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. But as Melvin shared last night, on the reservation, they wore jeans and cowboy hats and bolo ties. And so they really didn't have the costumes wearing them around on the reservation. But that's how that got started, and that was a, and the harmonies were great, but a lot of people remember them from mm -hmm, the costumes. Mm -hmm. Well, today we're going to share, for you who are watching us today and you don't know or you haven't heard their music, we're going to share some of their music, and, and we've got several different clips, and one of them actually features his mom. Right. When did she pass and how long has she? I don't remember when she passed, but I do know that she was inducted into the Southern Gospel Music Hall of Fame mm -hmm. in 2004. Wow. And then Melvin was inducted to the same Hall of Fame in 2020. And it was quite an honor. He asked me to go be with him that mm -hmm. day and it was amazing. And Travis was a part of that too, mm -hmm. Travis Bridgman. Well, the Bridgmans, um, Eva May, I, I talked to a cousin yesterday for just a brief, brief conversation. Her parents are the reason that I, at 14, I was a Beach Boys, the Beatles, <laughs> I liked all that music, but I came to Shake Rag, Georgia, and went to Everett's Music Barn, which is still there many, many years later, many years later. And Eva May's music on Jubilee was the reason I got involved in gospel music. There's one song that just captures your heart. And, and when you listen and you go back, it's like Eva May playing the piano. Nobody ever did it like she did. Right. She was amazing. So there's somebody who brought us all into this gospel music family. Now the Bridgmans, Travis, when he comes here and he'll say, do you want me to play the piano? And I said, it would be a crime for you to be in this building mm -hmm. and not play the exactly. piano. Yeah. There's, there's something about that old gospel music. I don't care what you're facing, what you're involved in. There's a song that will touch your heart. And we're going to go now to one of the songs. I'm not sure which one we're going to get, but we're going to get a little bit of this amazing family. Now, what year did you say they started singing? I'm not sure. I know they came to the South in 51, and they'd been singing several years. I can back it up, though. Uh, Melvin said he started singing when he was 11. Wow. So, and he's 90, so you can see how many years ago that was oh and back it up gosh. from there. Yeah, that is crazy, y'all. So we're going to share a little bit of their music. And again, we took this off YouTube, and it is one of those things, thank goodness for YouTube, because people can share all kinds of stuff sure on can. there. That's great. So here we go. We have our special guests now, the Cloud Indian family, and they're singing a song that was written by Mr. Vep Ellis. Listen closely as they do at the end of the trail. end of the trail, where dreams come true, we'll live forever in the home of the blue, and together we'll Of the 
Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third-generation race car driver, and we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece, or just making memories, writing a great American novel, or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge.
was that in the early 60s? It would be in the 60s and probably early 70s mm -hmm. too. It was on for many, many years. And that program, Jubilee, is what converted me truly from and from being summers in Shake Rag, Georgia and listening to Winnell Blackwell turning that music up as loud as she could <laughs> get it and Vestal was walking those dark hills. Yes, yes, It yes. was amazing. It was amazing to go from truly I love Motown and I love rock and roll, but gospel music just captured my heart. It gets, captured my gets heart. into your soul, doesn't it? Vicki, how many concerts a year do you go to? Oh, I couldn't even count, really. I'm at them More all the time. More than 40, I know. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm getting ready to go to the Memphis Quartet show. There'll be a lot there. Mm -hmm. um, but can I share something real quick? Absolutely. I was watching that clip that we just had shown from the Gospel Singing Jubilee. Uh -huh. You know, always come on, Jubilee. Yeah. Well, when my brother and I was growing up, Mom and Dad would always have that on TV, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. And we would listen to it, but, you know, we were supposed to be getting ready, but that didn't always happen either as your kids. Mm -hmm. But I would come through, or my brother Mike would come through, and one of us would start hollering, the Indians are on, the Indians are on. <laughs> so that was my first, I guess, glimpse That's of crazy. Melvin. And oh I shared God. that with Melvin last night and with our audience that we had. And it just really is. That's the first thing I knew about the Cloud Indian family was their costumes. Uh -huh, and uh, uh -huh. so for a kid, that was exciting. You always wanted to go see them. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and let's, let's talk about longevity because he's 90. He's still doing television. He right. loves music. He's still out among the crowds. We have a couple here in LJ, Georgia, who just celebrated 62 years of wedded bliss. Mm. And if you know Wallace and Carol Parks, you know that that is a true statement. They have celebrated 62 years. And Wallace Parks reminds me of a big, tall Indian. <laughs> he has jet black hair. I don't know if that man colors his hair or not. I'll just tell y'all, I had to color mine because some of y'all were whining about my white hair and I'm about to get ready to get my white hair back. But, <laughs> but it's so funny when I see Wallace Parks, he looks like he has just been to the beauty shop. That hair is always just shiny and black. And he looks like he's Cherokee. I don't know if he is or not, but he reminds me of that big old Indian boy, you know, just a, but what a precious, precious couple. So to Carol and to Wallace Parks, congratulations on making 62 years look so easy. It just looks so easy on y'all. So happy, happy anniversary. Now we're going to go to some more music by this family. This family, 10 children and a mom traveling, singing in the 50s, 60s, 70s, they certainly didn't go by jet airplane. No, they did not. They probably went in an old car. They did, and they finally were able to get a bus. And if you ever watch our program, you'll see the bus on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's an interesting if you ever talk to Melvin about some of the things that happened on the bus or mm -hmm. things that happened along the way. And um, they were a little bit before their time in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So they, they were just amazing, but there's nothing any better than family harmony. That family harmony. And his dad was a big part too. He, uh, you know, he, he was an evangelist. Mm -hmm. So they had the music, the evangelism. I think his dad played the guitar too. So they, uh, they really had quite the, the whole package. And now y'all are producing this program on WATC and truly adding the music and the Bible and the yes. Bible and everything in our life, you can go to the Bible and say, yes, right there. God talked about it. This is how it happened. This is how it's going to be. And so when you listen to a song, we were talking before we went on the air about Lance Carpenter. Right. Lance Carpenter, one of the greatest writers in gospel music, stood right over here on this stage time after time after time and sang and, and poured his heart out and then wrote a song about Alzheimer's because his wonderful wife of many, many years was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Well, within two years, Lance Carpenter was diagnosed of it's Alzheimer's. Amazing, isn't it? it is Alzheimer's is that horrible thing that will attack and destroy and sadly it often you know I look at couples who both get it and mm -hmm. I think is it their environment what do you think Vicki? I really don't know you know they've done a lot of studies trying to prove that and then at one time they thought it was hereditary mm -hmm. and you see it in families but then now they're saying it's not hereditary so I don't think anybody has the answer, to but be if honest it's, with you. <laughs> it's so weird if it's not hereditary and three siblings right. have it. That's what I How think, How can too. it not be? Because we have a family here in Gilmer County that there are 12 of them, and all 12 have wow. had it. So it's so strange, and there is so much research. But, but when Lance Carpenter stood over there, and he was talking about his journey to take care of his wife, Mm. I don't think he ever thought that he would be on that same right. journey, but what yeah. a great writer. What a great writer. He was, writer. and as we all know, caregiving's hard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're going to share some more music by this amazing family, and to think about, 
you know, you get up on Sunday morning, you get your kids ready for church, and you're all stressed out. Well, That's this true. poor woman got up every morning and got 10 kids ready. And then not only was singing and her husband was preaching, they were traveling around the nation, and they were sharing a message of the Lord. Now, your messages from the Lord come from the Bible, and you look at the music, and then you decide. That's usually what I do. He'll send me a list of the songs for each program, and, and usually I just pray about it and God directs me to a song. Mm -hmm. uh, I might listen to a couple of them, but it's really no doubt when God reveals it to me and he starts bringing scriptures to my mind. And so I start looking up the scriptures and usually most of the time the words just begin to flow and that's how the Holy Spirit works when mm -hmm. I teach Sunday school too. And you know, it's so exciting when you can feel that and know it's truly from God. Right, right. And, and this music, as I was watching them last night, I think, uh, I think they were doing Blessed Assurance. And I thought, yeah, we are assured. We are. We are assured. And I was just, you know, it was like 3 a.m., it's thundering, it's lightning, and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, I've got a busy day tomorrow. I really wanted to get some sleep. I got very little sleep last night, but it was a peaceful night of listening mm -hmm. to gospel music. So. Well, you know, gospel music can reach people just as well as the preaching sometimes. Absolutely. And, uh, Karen Peck, Peck just had her homecoming this past week, and mm -hmm. the first night they had 11 saved, which I exactly. thought was amazing. That is awesome. Well, Matt Dibler was making a decision years ago about several things, and he said, you know, I don't know if I can keep preaching and keep singing and keep traveling. I feel like mm -hmm. I'm neglecting my family. What should I do? And I said, give up the preaching. And he said, what? <laughs> and I said, you're reaching people in the music that the husband may never go to church. That's true. He may never darken the door of a church, but he will be sitting there and he will see a standing ovation for I have not forgotten. Right. And he will remember, he will remember. And so he looked at me and he said, are you serious? And he said, well, I really love my church. And I said, well, you know, you're my pastor. I love going in here and you preach, but don't give up the music mm -hmm. because often that music reaches people that would not be reached otherwise. Yeah, music, so. a lot of people can listen to music and it really speaks to their soul. Absolutely. Well, we're going to let this music speak to your soul and I don't know which one it is. <laughs> I do know that when the, the mama does the song that she did in their Indian uh, native tongue, it, it sounded a little bit like the song when I heard Amazing Grace in Cherokee and I thought, how amazing is that? That we have these different people, you know, I can't even remember the tribe they're from, South Dakota, is it South Dakota? Yeah. North Dakota. North Dakota. I'm just one of the Dakotas, to be honest yeah, with you. And, and these are American Indians who basically, this was their country. It was. So, yeah, it's mm -hmm. so cool that we're honoring them today. Here we go. Dakota. I met the Clout Indian family. a shepherd chief, and I am his, and with him I want not. He throws out to be a rope, and the name of the rope is love, and he draws me to where the grass is green, and the water is not dangerous, and I lie down satisfied. Now sometimes my heart is weak and falls down, but he lifts it up again and draws me into a good road. His name is Wonderful. Sometime it may be very soon. And it may be longer and it may be a long time. He will draw me to a place between those mountains. It is dark here, but I shall draw not back. I shall be afraid not, for it is between those mountains that the shepherd chief will meet me. And the hunger that I have felt in my heart through all this life will be satisfied. Now sometimes he makes this rope of love into a whip. But afterwards, he gives me a staff to lean upon. He spreads a table before me with all kinds of good food. He puts his hand upon my head, 
and all the tired is gone. My cup he fills till it runs over. What I tell is true, doubt not. These roads that are the way ahead will stay with me through all this life. And then afterwards I will go to live in the big teepee. And will sit down and rest with the shepherd's seat forever and forevermore. Let me linger, dear master. Draw me close to thy heart. From the shady green pastures, I will never depart. Never more shall I wander o'er the mountains of. I shall always remember. Talk about harmony. Exactly. Talk about family harmony. Talk about that mama's voice. Oh my gosh, Vicki. How amazing is that? It really is. And then you have like Melvin, who's known as singing the lowest baritone. So they had, it was amazing with all the family talent wow. that they had the different ranges and voices to put it all together. And, you know, to play the instruments, all those mm -hmm. things they did. So talented. Well, when we think about the history of America, we are, my family, my grandmother, one was French, my grandfather was German, another one was Scottish, um, you know, all the variety of people, and, and you were sharing with me that the dad was from a country near Germany. Right. And so the name is not an Indian name, it is his German or Romanian or wherever name. 
<clears throat> and then he came to America and met an American Indian. He did. Isn't that the coolest thing? I mean, what a great success story and what a love story because he being from Germany, number one, was an evangelist. Right. That's just strange because mm -hmm. my friend Elizabeth, who just flew out of here last night, said that there are very few Christians in Germany. Right. And I thought, how amazing, because these people together raised 10 kids who traveled the world teaching of Jesus. And they did truly travel the world. It's crazy. They, they went everywhere and they started, I, I wish I could remember, but they started many, many churches in, out west mm -hmm. and then they started migrating east and they kept planting churches. Mm -hmm. That was the original uh, mission work that they did and then the singing came along and then, then it went, you know, it was hand in hand. They did everything together and then eventually the group just took off. Wow. Well, when I think of Church of God, as a kid, I visited all kinds of churches. Me too. But Church of God is where you know that God is there. That is true. <laughs> very, you very know true. that He is there. <clears throat> it is so weird to look at the difference in how reserved and quiet some services are and then how amazingly vibrant and loud right. and spiritual some services right. are. And not that the quiet one isn't spiritual, but it's just different how we worship. It is, and um, you know, I'm, I go to Church of God now, and um, I love it. Mm -hmm. We laugh, though, at our church. We probably are about 75% Baptist mm -hmm. that came to the church. Converted. And we converted, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But um, we just really, we really do worship, and it's mm -hmm. amazing the different experiences you can have. And um, I've been to all churches, too. My daddy mm -hmm. sang when I was growing up mm -hmm. with the Joy Masters, mm -hmm. so, and a couple other groups, too. But So I visited many, many churches growing up, and... Um, but we were Baptist, mm -hmm. but God called me to this little church mm -hmm. in Hickory Flat, and I'm so glad that I'm there. He's using me. Mm -hmm. He's using our church and our community. We're growing, <clears throat> and it's amazing. And I said this long before I became a member. That church does more for the Hickory Flat, Canton area oh than any of the big churches in the community. Not putting them down. It's just that their whole focus is reaching people for Christ and mm -hmm. loving on people. Mm -hmm. And it's known for our church is known for a place to heal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, it's not about being in our church, and our pastor says that. You know, we're glad you're here, but you need to be wherever God calls you to be. Right. And I think that's where the growth comes from. And, and we see it every day because anytime there's a service there, it touches all, everybody. It from does. Older to younger. <clears throat> I think about the um, thing where I make Bob Reese that sweet potato cobbler. Right. <laughs> that's like my, that's my greatest gift every year. That's the hardest thing to peel all those sweet potatoes. <laughs> but I love Bob Reese. And, and let's say we need y'all to be praying for him because he right. has been battling congestive heart failure. Yes. He needs to get that health coming back in him and to get out there strong. They are still traveling. They are still singing. Mm -hmm. But he's been in the hospital recently. Yes, he got out last Tuesday, went in on um, Saturday, and they actually drew 11 pounds off of fluid. Wow. So he was really kind of struggling. But yeah. the amazing part, he's been singing this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, mm -hmm. they sang in Dalton yesterday morning, and then uh, he came to sing for Melvin. Melvin's very close to them. Mm -hmm. So they sang last night, too, in Cumming, Georgia. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's just, he just never stops. He, he just keeps stops. going, too. And, and uh, I'm thankful. Not just that he's a friend, but he is a cousin. Mm -hmm. And but we, our friendship is amazing too. Mm -hmm. We've always been pretty close. Such and I'm thankful for that. Yeah, such a good man. And it's one of those things. He doesn't just give to receive. He no. always gives and gives and gives. And whether it be for the foster children program, right. and that's that's one of those things. If y'all haven't been, you need to become a part of that. And it's called White Christmas, and White it is Christmas. amazing. It is amazing. It is amazing how many kids have had something for mm -hmm. Christmas because of him. That's Linda. true. And a vision they had over 30 years yeah, ago. Yeah, I think it'll be its what, 34th year or so this year, and he will, he will be having that mm -hmm. on, as far as the Isaacs will be back. So it's going to be a great time. And, and here we go again, another family traveling, mm -hmm. another family with... Um, Jewish German relations right. come to America, become Christians. Um, I, as I remember it, I think Lily was basically ousted by her family. Yes, and she was a Jew. Yeah, yeah, Lily yeah. was a Jew. Yeah. yeah, and I gotta make you laugh. Yesterday, <laughs> I made Jewish penicillin. I grew up in the Jewish community in Orlando in a Jewish community in Atlanta. <clears throat> All my friends were Jewish. All their grandmothers were amazing Jewish cooks. My grandmother is German. And so I make Jewish penicillin. Yesterday, I've been having trouble breathing for the last week, and I've been really struggling. So 
I kept saying, I need to open up, I need to do something, so I made Jewish penicillin, but I had a twist to it. I'm not surprised. I made southern country <laughs> cornbread to go with it. <laughs> so I posted it on YouTube, and I said, yes, it's Jewish penicillin, and it opens up your airways, and it does great. I just didn't make enough, because I drank on it yesterday, and I'm going to go home and make some more. But... But it is about our heritage, it is about the music, it is about the message, and at WATC, that's pretty much what that whole television station is built around, is. Mm -hmm. is the music, the message, and the memories of a greater America. And, and I, we can't that's say true. enough good about WATC TV 57. What an amazing family to work with. It really is, and Pat Mathis, she's the vice president mm -hmm. there, and she was able to join us for the uh, <coughs> celebration for Melvin last night, and she spoke about Melvin too. And that station is about ministering. Mm -hmm. it, it really is, and it's amazing. They have Southern Gospel, they have Contemporary, they have um, interviews, which I think you had one time. Right, you know, um, absolutely. We talked about, with Betty Cornette, we talked about suicide. And this week, this, this past week, I've talked to two women who were ready to end their lives. <clears throat> and I said, no, and I, I gave them all the reasons why. We don't do that, mm -hmm. we're not gonna do that. And today they are both healthy, wealthy, and alive. And I'm so thankful for that because you can make a difference in somebody's life. Yeah. And I've been sharing with women what abuse is about. And you can, you can visit a cemetery today within a 30 mile radius of here and you will find grave after grave after grave where suicide was committed because somebody treated them badly. Somebody told mm -hmm. them they were of no value. Somebody basically stepped down on them and, and held them down and battered them and let them believe that they were not of value. Yeah. And you know, it just happens so many times. And it's over really, and over it's and so over. It's so sad in our, in our world. But you know, my Sunday school class that I teach, I teach the senior citizens, but we allow, whoever wants to come can come. And we have a great class. And God put on my heart in December of last year, and our theme is Don't Miss Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we try to look for ways to serve him every day, but sometimes we need to see him in the miracles and be willing to step mm -hmm. up if we see somebody we think's hurting. And sometimes it's a <coughs> smile. Sometimes yeah. it's the easy things. It, usually if you love on people, it can change the world. Right. The, the two calls that I got that I worked through with them, both of these were shockers to me. I never dreamed mm -hmm. either one of these women would ever, right. ever. And I was like, wow. And today, this morning, they are both alive and they are both good. And, and I was so thankful that I could say, I've been there, I've, I've mm -hmm. almost done that, I know what you're dealing with, but don't let that, don't, don't let anybody steal your joy. Right, life's hard. Yeah. And you know, just because you're a <coughs> Christian doesn't mean life's gonna be easy. No. We still, and we talked about this yesterday, that, you know, just because you're a Christian, you're still going to have probably more troubles because the harder you work for him, right. the more Satan attacks. Exactly. And tries to keep it. So we have to stay rooted in him mm -hmm. to stay strong. And that's where our strength comes from. Right, right. Well, we have always said that Satan attacks the weak and, and Satan does attack the weak. And that, that's, his, that's mm -hmm. his privilege. He thinks he, he, he can attack that weak and, and he gets in and he gets in and he gets in and he gets in any way he can, whether it be drugs mm -hmm. or... Right. or um, affairs or, or um, cruelty or, or stealing or whatever he can teach you to do that's bad. That's true. He will work and he will do it. And, and he, he just kind of sneaks in there. And the, the key is you have to say, stop Satan, no. I have a cup that uh, Julie Darnell, who's one of our most precious members, and she does so much in our community. She, um, we've talked about battles and she's had some battles. We've all had battles. Mm -hmm. And her husband uh, died recently with Alzheimer's and she had a real struggle. And she would always say, not today, Satan, not mm -hmm, today. Mm -hmm. So she came into Sunday school class and she had me a mug. <clears throat> I had that, that sign that we, I got as a gift hanging in the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I drink coffee yeah. out of that every day. And I, it's a reminder, not today, Satan, mm -hmm, not today. Mm -hmm. Because he is going to attack. And the more that you try to do for God, that's when he attacks you the most too. Because, right. But he knows where your weakness is. Yes. And that's yes. what he, you know, yes. he prays on. And one of the things I say all the time that I think that Satan uses is, we're busy, 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 mm -hmm. and we don't take mm -hmm. time for God. That's it, yeah. And that's a shame, but it's it's true. And you know, when I visited WATC, mm -hmm. and we were sharing, they have a prayer line that I love. They do. And I love that the phones were lighting up as, as we were talking about suicide. You look mm -hmm. over there and the phones are lighting up because 
I have so many friends who either sadly committed suicide or buried a child who committed suicide or a husband who walked out in the yard and took a double barrel shotgun right. and ended his life. It's crazy that we have that one moment that we can reach that person and we can be the light in the darkness. True. We have the power to be the light in the darkness. I share that a lot. I talk about light. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, sometimes Christians start looking like the world mm -hmm. and we have to get out of that mentality. Um, we had an antique store, as you know, Lady oh and I did. Oh my gosh, yeah, I love, you love that antique store. I love store. writing checks there. Yes, <laughs> she did I like did. the antique store. <laughs> yeah, I did. But we, we had, it was 5,000 square feet and we had lots of lights on. So we would go in the afternoons and we'd have power strips to turn off. And so I had done that one afternoon. And I looked back and it was totally black except the very back corner. And there was one little light. And God began to speak to me. This is how things happen mm -hmm, with me. Mm -hmm. And he said, see, everything looked the same. Mm -hmm. But look at that one light, it, it illuminates everything. Mm -hmm. And he's, it's just like he spoke to me as a Christian, that's what we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You be that one person that illuminates in the world that people can see Christ through you. You know, you don't have to say anything sometimes. Right, right. And then that will draw people to you. And that's such a good way to have a witness mm -hmm. that people feel they can come to you. Yep. But we have to strive every day to be that light because it's yep. hard when Satan's it battling us every day. It's very hard. One of the things that happened when I, when I got the bad biopsy and they said, cancer, same cancer that killed your mother, we're going to stop it in its tracks, da, 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 da. I'm sitting there, okay, okay, whatever. And I'm thinking, God, this is not the time for this. Well, mm -hmm. it is in his time. It is. It is in his time. And I haven't shared all the gross and gruesome pictures except with maybe 12 friends. Mm -hmm. and, and when I did, they were all like, oh, my God, how are you standing that pain? Mm -hmm. And I'm standing that pain because... With the pain, there has been gain, which is very strange to me. I have learned more about people. I've learned more about how you can be a good person or you can be of Satan's flock. True. And, and we see that. And I've met the most amazing people mm -hmm. from Kennestone Hospital Support Team to Northside Hospital Support Team. Precious, precious mm -hmm. people who choose to make a living they call and they check on me and they worry about me and they take pictures and they share the pictures and they're looking at progress and it was so infected we thought I was going to lose my arm. I mean it was mm -hmm. crazy and it's healing now. And your prayers have made a difference. It's the power of God. That is the power of God. Mm -hmm. And I said it is so, it's mind boggling to me because I just had given in to, okay God, how am I going to learn how to put on my eye makeup with my <laughs> left hand when I lose my right hand? I mean, I just didn't think they would ever get the infection stopped. And the doctor was worried and he was like, get to the emergency room immediately. If this continues, we're gonna be in trouble. We're in trouble now, da, 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 da. And then it just started healing. And it's the power of prayer. It is the power of prayer. It's so strong and it's so yeah. real. And um, another friend, Julie, who gave me the mug, she asked, she says this all the time. She said, pray it, believe it, and claim it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of truth in that. But when we pray, of course, we're praying like he taught us in the Lord's Prayer. We, it has to be according to His will mm -hmm. and not our own. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's the hard part. because that's we tough. That's it's tough. It's tough because, <laughs> you know, when we're praying for someone that's very ill, you know, our prayer is for them to stay with us as long as they could. Mm -hmm. But that's not a, the plan. When you're, nobody's going to live forever mm -hmm. and God's in control. But when you learn to pray that way, mm -hmm. it's so much freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, I was told one time recently, and another wonderful gospel singer is Susan Wisnett of the Wisnets. Oh That's gosh, a family yeah. group too. Yes, you know? yes. And she shared this, so it's not, and I hope I, hope I get it right, but uh, probably not verbatim, of course. They were traveling, and one of the boys was younger, and he was very ill, and he started running a high fever, and she got really worried. And her father's a pastor, and her mother's a wonderful, wonderful prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. So she called her mom and said that, you know, you just need to pray for him. I'm so worried. And her mother said to her, don't pray. And she said, Mama, what are you talking about? She said, if you're going to worry, don't pray. But if you're going to pray, don't worry. And that sticks wow. in my head all wow. the time. Those words are powerful. Yes. And yes. I, I think about that a lot when I get in a situation, mm -hmm. you know, because it's our nature to worry. Mm -hmm. We all worry. Mm -hmm. and, but I've tried to learn, you know, the Bible teaches us not to worry. Yeah. And that's yeah. a hard thing to do, yeah. Sherry. Yeah. Very yeah. hard. And yeah. I can worry about my family a lot easier than I worry about myself. Yeah. Because we've talked about our children, the things we've gone through. But try to remember that when you're mm -hmm. going through something, 
you know, if you're going to pray, don't worry. Yeah. But if you're going to worry, there's no point in praying. I love that. That mm -hmm. is so cool. That has to be the saying of the day every day. Yes. Okay, we have one more thing with this amazing musical family that we want to share with y'all. So here we go. Probably over 25 years. Ladies and gentlemen, a grand old gospel welcome for the Clout Indian family. I appreciate that fine applause. And I can tell you right from the onset that after you took my country, I forgive you now after that good applause. You are forgiven. And tonight it's a real treat to have Mama out here of all of the gospel groups that you see on television known as the Old Timers. This is the only group that has been singing in the gospel singing circuit where all of the original members, God has given us the privilege, this is Thanksgiving, that every one of us still is alive. Is not the Lord good? And my mama, who is 90 and going on 91, is going to sing for you a song that she learned at the Indian Mission, the first gospel song. And she is going to sing it for you in her native language of the Indian tribe of the Arikaras from the Fort Berthold Indian Reservation. Okay, Mom. Oh, Jesus, Neshanu Dini Vetata Nusteya Vetata Iska Asi Wandu Akhira Na how about it, Mama Indian, 90 and going on 91. God love you, Mama, and here's just part of Mama's 10 Little Indians. From the 
wild shall be led by a little child, and I'll be changed, changed from this Indian, yes, that I am, oh, 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 yes, oh, there will be peace in the valley. little Indians. And now a song written by our youngest brother. Lord, a touch, a touch of your hand. Your hand, a touch of his mighty hand. My tears may fall, tears may fall, and they may grow, and they may grow deep in my soul. Great day. Thank today. you, Sherry, for having Amazing. me. Amazing. And to our friend, the Joy Masters, Tim Jennings, all the guys, the Joy Masters are ending their career this year. Go out and see yes. a Joy Masters concert. You won't be disappointed. Some of the best. I can remember sitting at the Sunnyside Church of God, squalling my eyes out <laughs> as they did. Um, uh, 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 oh, my gosh. What was the song that I the loved? The Potter Note Loves the Clay No, song. it's about... They have so many over the years. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm going to remember it and put it on Facebook. But <laughs> Charlene and I were sitting there bawling, mm -hmm. bawling. Charles was looking at us like, what is wrong with y'all? But yep. get out and go to a gospel music concert. I'll see you again only on ETC. Thank you, sweet Vicki. Thank, thank you, Sherry. Thank you, thank it was a great you. day. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.